So I just finished watching The Tholian Web, and I was really excited to see this one, but not for the normal reasons. When I first saw the title, I was like, man, I know that from somewhere, and it dawned on me. Uh, the name Tholian Web was the name of this reoccurring villain we had in playing like D&D and uh, Star Wars D20, a bunch of old tabletop role-playing games that my buddy Pop-Tart, yeah, that's his, his name, um, great DM, he had this reoccurring villain named Tholian Webb, and I always thought that was a really cool name, and uh, I get to this episode, and it's called the same thing, so I'm guessing this is where he's got it from, so Pop-Tart, if you're watching this, please let me know, um, otherwise, that's a really weird coincidence. So, on to the Tholian Webb. Uh, the Enterprise has to go and find a ship that has disappeared. Alright, we've seen this plot before, but this one gets interesting, because when they go there, they find the ship, but it's, like, green and glowing, and, uh, kind of there, kind of not there. It's disappearing from reality, so to speak. So, our brave trio, plus, uh, Chekhov, this time, get to go on board, and that was cool. I was like, alright, we get some more Chekhov stuff. And I think this is where the episode really gains its strength, is because while they're on there, the ship does begin to kind of dematerialize, and there's some actually really cool scenes, the special effects in them, of McCoy trying to like touch something and his hand's going through it. Um, yes, it does look dated, but it still was very effective, and I liked those visuals that they had. So, they're going to beam back aboard the Enterprise because the ship that they're on is disappearing. It's fading into another reality, so to speak. And they beam back aboard, except for Kirk. And he's trapped on board. At this point, I was like, oh, man, we're going to have another episode of Kirk trying to save the day and be the... I was wrong. Um, no, Kirk actually isn't even in this episode from this point on for the most part. That was really cool. They took the main character out of it. And it was really the Enterprise trying to save Kirk. With no effort from Kirk himself. I could have seen this being, you know, even something where... Yeah, they're trying to do it, but Kirk is off on this other ship. And he figures out how to do it on his own. Nope. He's stranded in the middle of nowhere. He's kind of floating around in his space suit. Uh, there's a few points where we see him fade in and out of reality. But other than for that, he is not in it. So, like I was saying, the main strength of this episode comes from the rest of the cast all getting bigger parts. We know Spock and McCoy have gotten bigger parts, but the other favorites, Scotty, Sulu, Hora, Chekhov, um, even uh, Nurse Chapel, they all get bigger roles in this, and that was great. I think one of the other really strong elements of this episode is there is a scene where Spock basically makes the announcement that Kirk is dead. The captain is gone. We need to move on. As Spock is assuming control of the ship. Um, and where do they go from there? And he and McCoy go and they watch this video. It's kind of Kirk's last will and testament, so to speak. It's his last orders to them. And that scene was really neat. It was Kirk kind of pouring his heart out. And we haven't seen that too much. Um, we know that he's fiercely loyal, especially to those two. And we know that he will do anything for his ship. But we haven't seen his passion in this light before. And that worked really well, seeing this through a video. And basically in the video, he's like, Spock, you know what to do. You do it. But listen to McCoy. McCoy is the heart of all this. And he turns around and is like, Hey, McCoy, don't be a dick. I know you don't like Spock most of the time. Don't be a dick. And I like, that was really great. Um, and, of course, we get some wonderful, wonderful, that Spock-McCoy banter back and forth with them, butting heads but also, like, interlocking with each other. Just great dialogue. Um, so, those were the strengths of this episode. The uh, character development that we saw, the use of the extra characters as a bigger part, Kirk not being in it, the downside, the plot was kind of thin. And I felt that is what held this episode back from being good to it could have been one of the great classics. This is something, if the plot had been stronger, 
Uh, let me back it up. Not the plot so much, but the storytelling itself. The plot was fine. They just didn't do enough with it. It meandered too often. If they had told it a little more sharply, I think it would have been a fabulous, fabulous episode that would have been revered with Amok Time and City um, and those great classic ones that we remember. So, that was my feeling on this. Now, the other thing I'm going to talk about real quick are the new special effects. So I'm watching the new version of it with all the updated special effects, which are, frankly, all right. Uh, they're nothing great, and personally, I think I've said this before, I would prefer to watch the old ones without the new updated special effects. Um, I know some of them really have improved the story, like Doomsday Machine, the old device just looked dumb. It looked silly. It was not intimidating. And the new one they created for it, that looked really cool. This was the opposite. Um, the original episode was nominated for Emmys for special effects. That's pretty cool. The new special effects, they take away from it. They don't look good uh, to begin with. And what they did replace the uh, Tholian ships with were just kind of boring, generic, bland. Uh, it looked, honestly, like something I would have made in fourth grade with MS Paint on Microsoft Windows 3.1. That's what this looked like. So, I did go back and I found the old footage and I saw just the special effects from the old one. Man, it looked awesome! You know, it's not like... You know, Death Star Trench Run, it's not 2001 awesome, but for a low-budget 60s television show that was being canceled, they looked great, and there's a reason why they were nominated for an Emmy. So, that was the Tholian Web in a nutshell. Um, I like this episode. This is one I would probably revisit, and this is one I would recommend. Like I said, not phenomenal, but solid. So, I'm going to go and try to knock out some more episodes, guys. Um, things are getting crazy here. I'm getting ready to move to a new place and stuff is up in the air. So anyway, thanks for keeping with me and I will see you guys later.